Uh, hi guys, a very warm welcome to our channel. And today we have a very special guest, uh, Ms. Ankita Ghos with us. To give a little background about Ankita, uh, she's currently working as a senior finance manager in financial planning and group analysis profile in Tata Steel. Uh, warm welcome, Ankita. Uh, firstly, thank you so much for uh, taking out uh, time for us today. Can you give us a little brief intro about yourself and about your current profile? At uh, yeah, sure. Hi, Bir Mohit. Thanks for this opportunity. And hi, everyone else tuning into this channel. I am Ankita Ghosh. I am a chartered accountant qualified in May 2014. I did my articleship with one of the big fours in Gurgaon. And prior to that, I did my graduation with in Delhi University. I have close to six plus years of experience in financial reporting, forecasting, planning, and financial modeling. And currently I'm working with a 150 year old manufacturing giant Tata Steel in the financial planning and analysis division. And I'm based out of Mumbai. Wow, okay, that was uh, really exciting. So uh, Akita, can you just tell us a little more about your profile as to uh, uh, what it does it entail on what do you do on a day to day basis? Uh, sure, uh, so the profile of financial planning and analysis is a much diversified profile, I would say. It is a leg up and uh, more broader in scope from a typical MIS profile. So the basic difference between a MIS profile and a financial planning profile is that in MIS, you go into a very granular detail about the business planning of a particular location or a segment or a product. In financial planning, you aggregate that up at the company level. In addition to that, you also factor in various macroeconomic uh, seg sectors and macroeconomic policies that would impact your business as a whole. And you take into account uh, the various management decisions that would impact the financial performance of the company. So it is not a post-mortem analysis of the financials like you do in financial reporting, but it is a forward looking pres presenting forward looking statements of your financial performance of the company based on which management takes critical decisions okay wow that sounds really exciting and who yeah. do you report to uh, generally like you prepare presentations and that those presentations are forwarded directly to a board or how does it flow uh, so in our uh, organization we have a five layer series so i am at the fourth layer I have a head above me and there's the chief who directly reports to the CFO and the CFO presents the presentation that we make to, uh, to the board. Okay. Wow. Great, great, great. And so, uh, you know, what are the typical uh, job oppor uh, opportunities or what are the growth prospects from if, if a person gets into this profile? The growth prospects, I would say, is very immense because these are the kind of roles that make you prepare for a leadership role. Right. Because you are not restricted to a single vertical or a single segment of the business. Rather, you are exposed to the entire business transactions and how your business performance looks like. You get a sense of the industry. You get a sense of what can be overlooked and where to give in attention for detail. And when you are at a level where you are managing a 10,000 crore turnover and more than that, you cannot, you know, be uh, very nitty gritty about and picky about every transaction and every detail. So this is the kind of role that helps you prepare to have that broader sense and outlook wherein you can see a business and understand it without delving too much into a detail. So I would say the growth prospects are immense and this is the stepping stone towards moving le uh, the various leadership roles that is available in the industry as of now. Wow. Okay. That, that's really exciting. Okay. So uh, now uh, let's address the elephant in the room. Uh, you know, how to get into this profile, because I'm pretty sure many of our uh, listeners today will be very excited, uh, right? Uh, yes. about, after hearing from you. So, so how to get into this profile? Uh, see, uh, when I qualified, even I was presented with diversified options, what to go, what to not, what not to choose out of those and finance as a domain itself is very diversified. So uh, there is no sure shot way of getting into a profile you desire when you are starting out. But my only suggestion would be that don't stick yourself to any transactional kind of a role like sales or accounts payables or account receivables 
or anything that is very routine or transactional. Maybe it's very good to give you a great foundation for transactions, but give it four months, six months, and then move into roles that give you a broad holistic view of the business, like M&A or treasury or reporting or MIS or budgeting. These kind of roles then further propel you into a role like this. Once you have that uh, broader outlook in terms of a particular product or a location of a business, you can surely propel yourself to a much wider scope like the financial planning of an entire group. Right. Okay. Wow. Got it. And uh, any particular skills that are required uh, apart from the technical skills that on, uh, that already, you know, a chartered accountant uh, a course already provides you, any specific skills required? Uh, yes. Uh, when it comes to a role like, and not even just for this role, any role, I would say Excel and PowerPoint are your best friends. So master them as much as you can, because a lot of your work depends upon your PowerPoint skills and your Excel skills and your time management skills. So when you know how to use these tools to your benefit, you will excel in your job no matter what. Uh, and as you said, the theoretical knowledge is always comes with your degree. And if not, you can always Google them out. So that's not a concern. But apart from that, when you're working in a department like this, you have to have certain soft skills because you're licensing with a number of cross-functional teams. You have to have that proper communication skills. You have to have that informal network to get the data at the right time, at the right moment, and with the right speed. Because uh, speed is the essence in this department. You are closely linked to the management and you do not get that much of a time to sit and wait for the data to come and you know process it. So as far as soft skills go, I would say focus on your time management skills, communication skills, and Try and, you know, I, I, this, like, I did this when I had started out in this profile. Try and see what you can do better in your day-to-day -day routine activities. If you can save some time in whatever you do daily, that becomes a habit and that goes a long way into doing your tasks faster, smoother, and with much more accuracy. Wow, very well said. Wow, that was it's nice, really nice. So, uh, Ankita, just uh, tell me one thing. Uh, no, uh, so... I'm sure that this profile must entail a lot of, uh, you know, uh, a good having a good grip on what exactly is the business, you know, and and knowing a lot about or interact, like you said, interacting with cross-functional teams, right? So, so you must be having a quite, uh, you know, uh, a good overview of what exactly is the business and how is every functional, you know, uh, interlinked, right? So, so I'm sure that that must be uh, there. Yes, true. Uh, but more what happens is like when you are a fresher, you know only the tip of an iceberg, I would say. <laughs> even with the industry, even with a specific company, no matter how many times you read the annual report, there, there is much more going on on an underlying basis. And those things don't get published because it's not a public knowledge thing. So what you have to do when you get into a kind of role like this you really have to bank upon your experience and your curiosity. You have to get hold of the thumb rules that drive your business. You have to understand what are the key drivers of the business. What are the key matrices that the management look for? What are the things that the management is targeting right now? You have to have a good hold of those things and you have to know what things are the underlying basis because of which these things matter. Once you have a grasp of that, your presentations and uh, the things which you need to focus on would be very much narrowed down and you can perform better in your profile. So yes, industry knowledge is very much essential. More than that, your business knowledge and your company knowledge is much more essential. And that comes with time and experience. It's good to have a basic hand knowledge by going through the various annual reports, going through the news, et cetera. But give it some time. Don't be too hard upon yourself. It takes, it really takes time to understand and there is no substitution for experience, I would say. Absolutely, absolutely. I totally agree with that. And uh, so, Ankita, now moving on to the softer aspects. Uh, how's the typical work-life balance? And because I'm sure this uh, is... It, uh, yes. <laughs> so it totally depends upon how up in the hierarchy you are and how closely linked you are to the key decision makers. 
Right. If the ultimate customer of your work is directly the CFO or the board or someone who is directly reporting to the CFO, of course you won't have much time in your hand because you are given uh, a decision. You are you have to perform on a very shorter notice and on a very shorter amount of time. So uh, the work-life balance, I would say, is totally dependent upon your ability to translate the instructions received into output. If you are good enough, if you are smart enough, it would be uh, much better for you. Else you would be like wasting hours and toiling for nothing. Right, 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 right. I, I agree with you. Okay, very well. So uh, <clears throat> uh, moving on, any particular tips for, for aspirants for, you know, who are looking to uh, make a career in this profile? Uh, yeah, like I said, uh, always like focus on your excellent PPT for more and like for sure. There is nothing that can, that's the topmost skill I would say that you would be needing not only for this profile, for any profile for that matter. Apart from that, specifically, if you talk about this profile, try to have a more macroeconomic aspect and outlook when you're approaching things. Try not to be mechanical about it and uh, move, like try to analyze trends and patterns without delving too much into detail. Uh, and uh, like analyzing any stock is a good start to develop that practice because you have very limited information about any company and you have to make sure whether you want to invest in that stock or not. So follow that approach. And uh, much of the profile depends upon common sense, I would say. So have an open mind and try not to be mechanical about things. That's it. Okay. Wow. Very nice. Very nice. So uh, I'm sure, you know, after listening to you today, uh, many people would, would, would want to make a, uh, you know, uh, make a switch to maybe this profile. So uh, if, if let's suppose a person wants to make a switch, right, for, from, from, from a tax background, let's say. So what advice would you give to him or her or, you know, any additional coursework that you think would be relevant for him? Additionally, I would say you should have a sound knowledge of financial modeling okay. because uh, like financial reporting is a very streamlined profile. You have your accounting standards that guide you. There is a three statement that has been prescribed. You have to present your results in that. But financial planning is a leg up. Like there is uh, much of it depends upon speculation. And so uh, you will have to build your formats. You will have to build your models from the scratch. So I think a course in financial modeling would help you because you will understand what kind of drivers you need to fit in, what is impacted when you change a variable uh, at one place and the output at the other place. So I would say financial modeling is something that you can try on. Other than that, it is also helpful because there is a lot of scenario analysis that happens. Our role, more than 50% of it depends upon scenario analysis because that's what management is paying you for. They have certain decisions that they want to uh, take and they want to see the impact of it on the financials. So uh, this kind of uh, knowledge in financial modeling would definitely help you to move into this profile. And the profile as a whole gives you a taste of every vertical of finance, be it tax, be it MA, be it treasury, be it reporting, be it corporate finance, everything. So you need to have a, at least if I would not say a detailed uh, knowledge, but at least a basic knowledge of each of these functions. And so uh, a brief reading up of the standards and a brief reading up of, about the taxation laws, MA rules, et cetera, is definitely going to make your case better. Okay. Okay, uh, thanks, Ankita. So just one last question, you know, uh, and we've been reading a lot as to how technology is impacting some of the traditional chartered accountancy profiles, right? So, uh, uh, you know, and especially with the impact of COVID, the accelerated, uh, uh, you know, acceptance of technology has accelerated like 5x or 10x maybe. So how do you think uh, technology is, will, will impact the corporate, uh, the financial planning and analysis profile? And any tips you would like to give our young chartered accountants as to how they can be up to speed with that? Uh, sure. Uh, we, yes, like you said, technology has been a big factor uh, and it is going to be a big factor in, in the coming years as well. Uh, the financial planning profile basically revolves a lot around numbers. 
so uh, the trend what i have observed uh, like observed now with the management is that they are not focused much on the numerical aspects when you present to them they want to see it in a more graphical or in a more chart like manner or in a snapshot form which can give them an overview about the entire business and that is easier said than done of course but thanks to many tools that are available in the market now like power bi or tableau etc which makes these presentations more presentable and more informative i would say like a lot of the analysis which even we do while we prepare the data is much more easier when we see it in a graph or in a chart or in a storyline that we can do using these softwares so yeah i would recommend if the chartered accountants could get their hands dirty on a software like a power bi or a tableau etc it would be very helpful for them because these are just starting to catch up with the industry right now and uh, having a pre hand knowledge of it is always beneficial absolutely absolutely right no i i agree with you you know uh, what the cfo wants to see is just a dashboard where you know he can have a uh, like a 360 degree view of what is happening in the business and you know how exactly building Right. And, and and a step up above that is that, uh, like uh, they want an app to be developed also if it is helpful. Like a lot of time gets wasted. You know, you prepare the deck, then you format it, then you edit it, then you send it across. Then if there is something extra that the management needs, you need to again prepare a deck to back up those previously sent deck. So a lot of it like uh, is going towards a culture where. the management can get the answers to their questions on a click of a button so we are talking about embedded technologies in the presentation embedded drill down options uh, to deep dive into any particular uh, form or any particular aspect that a management wants to view in the presentation that you have provided so yeah these things are catching up and these things are also available in the market as of right now and these things will take some amount of time to get absorbed by a larger organization but uh, like i said if you already have a hands on experience on that it's always come with gun- guns blazing when you're going for your first interview right i i agree with you and just for the benefit of our viewers uh, i would just like to say that power bi is basically a tool wherein which provides the functionality of uh, analysis much uh, better functionality vis-a-vis an excel right and you can you can easily get a good grasp of the basics of power bi uh, there are tons of um, co- content on youtube you can just uh, you don't need to enroll in any course or anything just see watch it for free and you will get a basics right and that that can be a very good value add to your to your resume because these are the skills which uh, which uh, uh, employers of today's age are looking into okay yes so, through that Yeah. Okay. So, ha- thank you so much, Ankita. I think this was very helpful. Uh, I'm sure our viewers must have, you know, got many insights. So, uh, thank you so much. And I'll just uh, drop a link in the uh, in this video's description to your, to your LinkedIn profile. So, and if anyone wants to get in touch with you, so you know they can they can do. Sure. Sure. Very much. Any time. Thank you. Thank you, Ankita. Thank you.